Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So a while back, I did a video about the Super Console X King. And that device is basically a preloaded Android TV box using this box here. This is the B-Link GT King. Now as far as Android boxes go, this is one of the most powerful you can find. It runs an S922X chipset. And while I appreciate what they've done with the Super Console X King, you know, preloaded it with a bunch of games and added some controllers, it's not the greatest experience in the world. The game image that they used is not fully in English, and the controllers that ship with the device are kind of junk. And in that video, I did mention that you could do this for yourself for better and potentially cheaper. And so that's what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to take this original box and we're going to load it up with our own Emulec version, add our own games, and also our own controllers. So if you're looking for the best Android TV box experience with minimal work, this is actually going to be your best bet. So I'm pretty excited to check this out, so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, let's start by talking prices. So the 256 gig model of the Super Console X goes anywhere from $190 to $200 each. And that's going to come with two controllers and preloaded games, but on a kind of crappy micro SD card. Now you can buy the GT King itself for about $100 to $110 on AliExpress, or you could get it on Amazon for about $150. So we'll go with $110 as our base price for this. For SD cards, I recommend a 256 gig card for this build, so that's going to cost you about $30 for a good, reputable SD card. And for controllers, I recommend this wired controller here. It's about $25. It's really great. So altogether, $110 plus $30 plus $25, that's $165. Or if you wanted to have two controllers, that's going to be $190. So really, about the same price as a preloaded Super Console X, but with way better controllers and a more reliable SD card. Of course, the allure of this Super Console X is the fact that everything's preloaded. You don't have to do any of the work yourself. Okay, so let's do a quick rundown of the components now that I have them in hand. So obviously you want to start with the GT King itself. Out of the box, the only things we're going to need are the AC adapter and then an HDMI cable. And here's the micro SD card. I recommend anything from SanDisk or Samsung. You don't need the fastest card in the world, you just need something that's reliable. I think that these A1 cards are perfect. And for controllers, I'm going to use the B-Top wired controller. Now this lacks analog triggers, but that's not that big of a deal because the games we're going to play on here won't really use that anyway. The analog sticks work well, and I really appreciate this gamepad. It feels nice and retro. It's going to be good for both retro and modern games. Okay, so first we're going to install Emulec. So you're going to want to go to the Emulec wiki page, and I'll have all this in my written guide, which is going to be in the video description. And here you can see the S922X chipset is supported by Emulec. So let's install it. You go into How to Install, and here find the S922X chipset, which is right here, and then make sure that you grab the image file that is listed here. The file name is long, but what I look for is the NG in the title and the word generic. Okay, so let's actually grab that image and download it. So go to the download page, find the most recent release of Emulec, and here it is right here on top. It has the NG and the generic. Okay, so once you've downloaded that file, let's go ahead and burn it to that SD card. Insert that SD card into your device, and then open up an app called Belena Etcher. You may have to download it if you don't have it already. From here, you can actually just pick the file. You don't need to unzip it. And then under Select Target, pick the SD card, and then press Flash. It's going to ask, do you really want to do this because the SD card is so large? And you're going to say, yeah, man, I want to do it. And then depending on your window settings, it may ask you again, do you really want to do it? And of course, you'll say yes. It's going to take a couple minutes to flash the SD card. It's going to decompress, then flash, and then validate it. Once it's done, the software is actually going to eject the SD card. So you actually need to pull out the SD card and plug it back in. When you plug it back in, you're going to get this pop-up here for the Emulec drive. And this is exactly where we want to be. Go into this device trees folder and you're going to see a bunch of different DTB files. Now this might be confusing, but basically these are different boot files depending on the device that you're using. So let's find the right boot file for our device. Again, back on the written guide, I'll have a link to this page here, which will show you all the different device trees. And within here, we want to find the B League GT King. And here it is right here. And here's the name of the file we need to find. G12B S922 B Link GT King. So back on our folder, we're going to find that file. And here it is right here. Of course, if you want, you can always go back to that page, verify you have the right file name. Yep, we're good to go. So now press Control C to copy that file, go back to that main Emulec folder, and then Control V to paste it in. Now we need to change the name of this file. We're going to change it to dtb.img. It's going to ask you to confirm. You say, yeah, man, I want to do it. 
And if you're not seeing the file extensions at the end of your name, what you need to do is go into the View ribbon and then select File Name Extensions here. Okay, that's everything we need to do for this setup. I know you feel like a hacker right now because you've basically broken into the matrix, but we're done. We need to eject the SD card and let's plug it into our device. Now you're gonna want a toothpick for this part. I know it sounds crazy, but basically put the SD card into your device and then we're gonna boot it into Emulec. The thing is, this is an Android TV box. It's going to default to opening up Android when you boot it up. So what you have to do is press the reset button when you plug in the power cable. So in one hand, hold the power cable, and then in the other hand, on the bottom, there's gonna be a little hole. Push that down with the toothpick. You're gonna to hear a little click, hold that down. Now, while it's held down, go ahead and plug the device in. And then keep holding that reset button down until you see the boot logo. After that, you should be good to go. And don't worry if you mess this up, you can do this multiple times as needed. After that, you'll see the Emulec logo. It's going to repartition the SD card to make use of all that file space that we have inside. And then it'll reboot Emulec and set things up and you'll see this video here. And that's it, now you're in Emulec. From now on, anytime you power on the system with the SD card inside, it's gonna boot right into Emulec. Not a lot to do in this first boot up, but there's a couple things. So first of all, you need to map your controller and just make sure you have it plugged in and then press a button. It'll say gamepad detected and then just go through and assign all of your buttons. For the hotkey enable, I recommend using the select button. Now, if you're not plugged into ethernet, you'll need to set up Wi-Fi as well. But another thing I recommend is installing Drastic. This is the DS emulator. This is the only one you have to actually install manually. It'll be in the setup section and you just go through the prompts here. And then once you're done, it's good to go. One other thing we can do while we're here is set up a different theme. So let's go into updates and downloads and then themes. And then you're gonna see all sorts of different themes that you can download. We'll try out a few different themes in this video. We'll start with the super sweet one. So you just go ahead and press A to select it and then choose install. Another thing we should always do is check for updates. You never know when they're gonna push some sort of small or minor fix. So to do that, it's in the same folder, just go to start update. And it'll let you know whether or not there is an updated version and then just go ahead and select yes. Okay, and while that update is downloading, let's go ahead and change out our theme. Go into UI settings, then theme set, and we're gonna change it to the super sweet one. Okay, and there we go, we've now changed out the theme. I'm not super happy with this one, we'll deal with that later. Okay, once the update is done, you can go ahead and reboot the system to apply the settings. So go into quit, then restart system. From there, it'll go through the update process. It's gonna take a few minutes to extract and install everything, but after that, it'll boot you right back to the main menu. Okay, so now we have a fresh install that's fully up to date. Let's go ahead and start adding our game files to it. So go down to quit and then shut down system. Now remove your SD card and put it into your computer. This time you're gonna see a bunch of different pop-ups come up. There's a couple windows here you don't need at all. For example, this storage one, you're not gonna need it. Same thing with that emulec one that we had used earlier. We only want this one here, it's called EE ROMs. And in here, you're gonna see a bunch of different folders that correspond to different emulators and systems. And this is where we're gonna add all of our game files. Now, game files are copyrighted and I can't tell you where to get them, but you'll need to find them on your own. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to find too are BIOS files. BIOS files are basically system files that allow certain systems like PS1 and Game Boy Advance to work properly. So for those, you're gonna to wanna to look for a RetroArch BIOS pack. And once you have that BIOS pack together, like this one here, you're gonna to wanna to just basically copy all of these over onto the BIOS folder of that SD card. And you can either piecemeal together your BIOS files one by one, more on that later, or you can just throw in the whole pack like I'm doing here. All right, so once you have your BIOS files moved over, now you can start moving your game files over. And again, for this, you'll have to build your own ROM library. So I'm just gonna work under the assumption that you already have all of your game files. And so here are mine, they're nice and organized on the left, and then on the right is the SD card. So I'm gonna just pick a system and move the files over. We'll start with, say, Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, because we have such a big SD card to work with, I'm gonna move over the whole NES library, but of course, you can just pick and choose the ones you want. And honestly, this is gonna be the longest and most arduous part of this entire video. You're one, gonna to have to find all of your game files and then organize them as you see fit, and then also move them over the SD card. And it's gonna take time. I would expect to spend maybe a day or two getting all these files together and moving them over. Of course, if you want a small library, it's not gonna take that long, but if you want something comprehensive, like something you would find on the Super Console X, it's gonna take a bit of time. And as you build your ROM library, I recommend using what they call the no intro ROM set naming convention. And that's just basically a system they use for naming the ROMs. That's why you see things like USA in parentheses afterwards. So have a look at that as well. I'll put everything in the written guide, but that's gonna allow you to use things like bezels later on in this video. 
Anyway, that's really it in a nutshell when it comes to moving your game files over. You basically just find the folder, then move the corresponding files into that folder. Now you might be wondering whether or not you have the correct files for Emulek. So let me show you some tips with that. So first, go back to that Emulek wiki page. And then on the right, you're going to find a link that says Supported Emulators and Paths. And in here is basically a table of everything that's required. So on the left, you'll see the platform and then all the emulators that are available, the name of the folder on your SD card, and then the specific file extensions that are required to run those games. So for example, if you want to play TurboGrafx-16, you can see here is the names of the emulators that work with it. This is the folder you put the files in and here are all the different file types that are supported. So that's a great reference if you're trying to make sure you have the right files in your folders. Another thing you can check is your BIOS files. So here is going to be a listing of all the BIOS that are required for every system. The file names themselves will be on the right here. And on the left, you're going to find an MD5 hash. This is actually the naming code embedded in each of these files. So if you search by the MD5, you can typically find exactly the file that is needed for Emulek. Now, most of the BIOS packs will have the correct files anyway. But if you're trying to piecemeal together your BIOS files, this is the method for doing that. And not every single one of these BIOS files are required for every system. Yes, for something like Amiga, you definitely need to have BIOS files in order to run the system. But if you scroll down, something like Game Boy doesn't actually require BIOS files, but you can add these. And what that means, if you add these files, you're going to see the boot logo for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Now that being said, Game Boy Advance actually does need the BIOS files in order to boot properly, so you are going to want that one. Altogether, the easiest thing to do is to use a BIOS pack, but this is your option if you want to piecemeal it. Okay, flashing forward here, I've added all my games to the SD card and I put the SD card back in the device. And so here I am with my completed library. But like I said, I'm not super happy with this theme, so let's change it out for a different one. We're going to go into updates and downloads, then themes again. And then honestly, I'm just going to go buck wild and download a bunch of them and see which ones I like the best. And a lot of these are really great, but one of my recommendations is this one here called Artflix. It looks really nice. But the thing about this is that a lot of the descriptions are in Portuguese, and as much as I love Brazil, let's try something in English. So this one here is called Roleta. This one kind of has a nice arcade feel to it. We're going to use this one for the duration of the video. Now once you have all of your media loaded up, it's going to look really great. Let me show you what it looks like when it's all done. So for example here you can see the games are on the left, you have your box art on the right, as well as a short video that will play when you hover over a game. And to do that, you're going to have to set up scraping. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to select a system here that doesn't have any box art yet. So let's go with Dreamcast. And as you can see, when you open it up, it just shows the names of the files here. It doesn't show any box art or things like that. So what you want to do is go into the scrape section. And within here, you can set whatever parameters you want. For box source, I like to use box 2D, but it's all up to you. Now to get this to work properly, you're going to need a screen scraper account. I'll have links to this in my written guide. It's very easy and free to set up. After you've entered your username and password from that website, you're good to go. From here, just select Scrape Now and then Start. And you could do this one system at a time or all the systems at once. We're just going to do Dreamcast first, so it's only going to take a few minutes to do the 23 games that I have in here. Once it's done, it's going to say Update Your Games List to apply the changes. Go into Game Settings, then Update Games List. That's going to restart Emulation Station, and as you can see now, we now have the box art as well as the videos that will play when we hover over a game. It's also going to fix the names of the games, as you can see on the left. And that's scraping in a nutshell. This is something that will also take a long time if you have a large library, so this might be something you want to do at night while you're sleeping. Either way, this is how you make a really nice looking system. Now let's talk a little bit about bezels. So under the Updates and Downloads section, there's a Bezels Project option. And within here, you can download bezels specific to a system. For this example, I'm just going to do NES. So you download the NES bezel pack, and once it's done downloading, it'll install all of them onto the system. And this is going to require you to have that no intro naming convention on your ROM files. But if you have it all set up and you've downloaded the bezel pack, when you start up a game, instead of seeing the black borders on the left and right, you're actually going to see a special bezel depending on the game. So for example here, I'm getting an Adventure Island bezel. It's really going to be up to you whether or not you want to do this extra work to make sure you have these nice bezels. Honestly, I kind of go back and forth about this option. And for the rest of this video, I'm actually just going to use the black bars just to make things simple. Okay, let's do a little bit of game configuration. We'll start with Game Boy. What you want to do is press start to go into game settings, and then you can go into per system advanced configuration. From there, select whatever system you want. We're going to do Nintendo Game Boy. Now there's all sorts of options within here. Honestly, a lot of these are already preset to the optimal settings. But the one thing I want to do is colorization. By default, Game Boy shows games in black and white. 
but you can add all sorts of cool colorizations to it. My favorite is this one here called Special One. So once you select that colorization, you don't have to do anything else. Just go ahead and back out and then let's start up a game. And so now when we start up a Game Boy game, you're going to see that one, it's in this colorization, kind of has this green tone to it. But also I have the Game Boy Boot logo, and that's because I added those BIOS files to the BIOS folder. Now once you're done playing a game, what you do to exit it is hold down select and press start twice. And that's really about it. You don't have to do a lot of special tweaking for most of these systems, but Game Boy does require that colorization fix. Other systems like Game Boy Color, you don't have to do anything, they're just going to work out of the box. And as you can expect, these games are going to play wonderfully on this system. The CPU on this is so powerful that this is not an issue at all. So Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, these are all going to play great. Now DS does require a little bit of configuration, and this one's a little bit weird. In order to get to the menu, I had to plug in a USB keyboard and then hit capital M to bring up the menu. Once I was in there, I was able to reconfigure the controls, but I did have to do that the first time around. After you have all that set up, you can adjust your hotkeys and everything else, and so you can set up things to play DS games and double screen and everything else. All the menu is available to you, but you do have to use the keyboard that first time around. So I'm going to take a few minutes and just kind of run through all the different systems that I set up here to show you what kind of a performance you can expect from this system. And obviously I've done a whole video about the Super Console X King and the performance on that video is going to be exactly the same as you're going to see in this video, but I just want to show off some of the things you can do. So in addition to things like Amiga and TurboGrafx CD, you're obviously going to be able to play other 16-bit systems like Genesis and Super Nintendo. All these are going to work wonderfully on the default settings. You'll also have no problem with the 32-bit system, so things like 3DO as well as PlayStation 1, they're going to play great. In general, for this build, I'm not going to do any upscaling, I'm just going to play everything at its original resolution, just to kind of keep the spirit of these original systems. But things like PlayStation 1 would be able to play at a double resolution, no problem. When it comes to arcade gameplay, this is actually a really good system for arcades. So you can play everything from classic main systems over to your favorite shooters, as well as maybe your side-scrolling beat-em-ups. All these are going to play wonderfully. You can play everything from the 90s on this, basically no problem. Moving it up a notch, you're going to be able to play the entire Neo Geo catalog, no problem as well. And really, the upper limit of the system is going to be the Killer Instinct games. Killer Instinct 1 plays reasonably well. It will dip down here and there, but for the most part, it'll stay about 56 frames per second or higher. But unfortunately, Killer Instinct 2 is unplayably slow. You're not going to be able to get over 50 frames per second when playing this one. So this is really going to be your upper limit. And of course, Emulek has support for Daphne, so you could play some old Laserdisc games too. Honestly, this device functions really well as an arcade box. Okay, moving things up here, I'm going to do one tweak with Nintendo 64. What you want to do is get into the RetroArch Quick menu by pressing Select and X, then go down to Options. And here under the 4x3 resolution, I recommend upgrading it to 640x480. This is going to give you much better resolution, and you're still going to get great performance with a Nintendo 64. As always, you're going to see dips when it comes to something like Goldeneye, but for the most part, every other game in the catalog is going to work great. Moving over to Saturn here, this is a 1x resolution using the default Yabasan Shiro core, and it's working really well. All the Saturn games I tested, even some of the harder ones like Virtua Cop 2, played at full speed. So this is a really good Sega Saturn box as well. Alright, kicking up a notch again, we're going to use the Flycast core in RetroArch for Sega Dreamcast. Now there is a standalone Flycast option available in this, but the configuration of it is pretty complicated, and so if you're comfortable with doing it, definitely check it out. But personally, using the Flycast core to 1x resolution looks really great and works really well. And in addition to Dreamcast, you can play the Dreamcast related arcade system. So here's the Naomi system running Virtua Tennis 2 working really well. And here's a Thomas Wade. Dolphin Blue is probably one of the harder games to run on this system, and as you can see, it's running wonderfully. Overall, keeping things at 1x resolution with Dreamcast is going to give you that original feel to everything, those big chunky pixels, and it all plays really well. And finally, the hardest system that this device can handle is PSP. Now, I would recommend a 2x resolution with this, and then setting up an auto frame skip of 1, just in case there's a game that you come across that needs that auto frame skip. But for the most part, your side-scrolling games and 2D games, they're all going to play wonderfully at 2x resolution. Something that's a little bit harder, like OutRun 2006, is definitely going to use that auto frame skip. But all in all, PSP is going to run really well. Of course, you'll have to make concessions for God of War, like you have to do with any system, but overall, PSP is great. So yeah, that's really going to be it in a nutshell. I just wanted to show you how to set up the Super Console X King yourself using a DIY method. 
And sure, it's going to cost you about the same amount, but you're going to have an SD card that's not going to crap out on you over time, and you're going to have controllers that you're actually going to enjoy using. And on top of that, you get to curate it with your own game library. And it's going to open up the whole world of emulation and configuration and things like that. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Be sure to check out that written guide that I have in the video description, and we'll see you next time. Happy gaming.